He, oh, he was in the film The Hangover. He's the uh -huh. one with the big hair, yeah, the yeah, crazy yeah. one. Um, and yeah, he interviews famous people, but he roasts them, like absolutely tears them apart. And it's all done very deadpan and very straightforward. And he asks them really awkward questions. Isn't that how you do a roast? Yeah. yeah. And it's really embarrassing. There's no other way but to do it. But brilliant. It's hilariously okay. funny. But I'm sure you won't roast me. Please. <laughs> that would have been my next question. <laughs> did, you, did you save some cookies for us upstairs? No, no, we ate everything. No, there's some leftovers. There's some... Hey, you just say that! <laughs> yeah, I know he's yeah. fine. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I wouldn't do that. I love How was your day? Busy. Very busy. <laughs> You're a busy Surprising, bunch here. <laughs> surprisingly enough. Yeah, very busy. Did you enjoy being a model? Uh... Does anybody enjoy being a model? People who... I don't even think models enjoy being models, really. They get paid for that. Why would they... What yeah, do... I know, but... People get paid to work in the sewers, but they might not like it. <laughs> or... That's not... I'm not making an equivalence between... <laughs> sure. <laughs> We're gonna cut That's not the same thing. <laughs> Maybe they would like to swap. I don't know. Do you think an alligator likes being an alligator? Uh, does it know any different? Maybe they look at crocodiles and think, that looks fun. I never knew the difference between the two. Salt water and fresh water. Thank you. But I don't know which is, I think it's alligators are... Yes, they should be uh, unsalt water because they're, they say they have alligators in the sewers. And in the sewers, it's not so. No, that's water. crocodiles. Got <laughs> it. I don't know. Is this a nature podcast? <laughs> not yet. Right. I thought I'd, I'm in the wrong room. No, you're in the tornado okay, right. room. Okay. <laughs> Apparently. It's a weather podcast. I need to focus, but I can't right now. Okay. So. This um, is going really well. I like this. <laughs> this is good. My boss is not going to like no. this. <laughs> so why did it take you six hours to record the podcast? Well... Let well now, you. let me tell yeah. you about alligators story. and crocodiles. <laughs> Hi everybody, and welcome to Sparsoft's podcast series, Make It Easy, where we deep dive into the world of technology today. Actually, today, here with me, I'm your host. Hi, Sandra is my name. Uh, together with me today, we have Toby Pestridge, our creative director from Sparsoft UK, from the city of Bournemouth. How are you doing, Toby? I'm doing very well, thank you. How was your day up until now? It's been very busy. And what actually happened in your day today? Today's been a lot of media work. So photography, we've had a photographer in here doing photo shoots all over the building, exploring the place and making sure we've got media collateral. Nice. So basically you're ready to show the world <laughs> who you guys are here. I think so, yeah. Okay, so yeah. this will just be the beginning of born with people taking over. Oh, I don't know about contributing, not taking over. That's even better. Yeah. Um, we said that today we're going to talk about working in distributed teams and mm. globally distributed teams, which I think is quite a cool subject. And I would like to start talking about it by asking you, when was the first time you interacted with a multicultural team? Okay, um, well I've been working in this industry, in this sector, creative, UX, design, for about 20-ish years. Mm -hmm. um, and I've worked with lots of individuals, people from all over Europe and the world, Germany, Estonia, uh, the Netherlands, etc., um, as individuals. So in, in working in creative agencies, I've worked in mixed teams. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't really until I joined Spirosoft about three years ago that I had more of a in the deep end moment, mm -hmm. where, you know, fully immersed mm -hmm. into uh, fully functioning, uh, very diversely mixed teams. And I've learned a huge amount from that. And it's, it's so much more about 
working with people mm -hmm. than it is about working with systems or, or even just being a good designer. It's so much more about cooperating, collaborating, um, and really committing to a, a shared vision. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you think these cultural differences have influenced the creative process itself? How do you think that you leveraged these differences for better outcomes? I think it's about making sure you've got a shared goal, mm -hmm. an agreed direction that you're heading in, that you've got agreed ways of working, and that you set expectations early. And that could be, that could be everything from having an agreed language and sticking to it, so you make people feel um, like they're working as a team together, that you agree even on systems and bits of software and make sure you, you work together in the, in the same ways, all the way through to uh, making time for being together outside of the workplace. Mm -hmm. So even if that's setting up meetings where you get together from all the different teams around the world and you talk about anything other than work, all of those things mm -hmm. contribute. Um, you were talking about the basics, like setting a common language. Mm. Were you ever in a scenario where um, English was not the preferred <laughs> common language? It hasn't happened yet. Um, but I suppose it wouldn't be a problem. But I would, <laughs> I personally would, would need an interpreter. That's partly to do with I haven't had to learn another language mm -hmm. yet, it, mm -hmm. you know, I'm happy to learn languages, but because English is the preferred language of technology and business and science, it has just worked out this way that I haven't needed to, which is good because I'm atrocious at other languages, but... That's not quite true, I mean, you just told me a couple words in Romanian <laughs> a few <laughs> Two hours phrases, ago. that's it, that's it. That's I mean, they would get you and by. And about six Polish words, yeah, but... Those would get you I by. I can survive. And, uh, but, but to be fair, all credit to the teams that I've worked with who do a fantastic job mm -hmm. at speaking English better than many of us do, actually. That's not quite true, but thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the compliment in, uh, in the name of everybody who <laughs> has English as a second language. Um, how have you seen the dynamics of multinational teams evolve during your career? Because 20 years is not... It's not such a short period of time. True. How has it changed? Um, a lot. Uh, I, I think a lot of countries have have had to to change in in the way that they collaborate cross culturally. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the UK as well, especially. So the the really big pivot point was obviously the pandemic. Mm -hmm and lockdown and the ways that that changed the ways that we work together but it also had a knock-on effect that companies could start to look further afield in terms of employment so rather than a company just saying okay we need these roles we need them to come into the business because that's all we do mm -hmm. that's all we know and we're going to have they're going to have to commute in so you sort of draw a radius around your business and you say, well, this is the area that we're expecting people to live and work in. But now that's not the case. Hybrid, remote, uh, you could work for a company that's based on the other side of the world now. Uh, and, and for businesses, they're now realizing that we can spread the net wider. You know, we can look further afield for great talent. So you can employ the best people. Uh, you only have to be able to make a small compromise on where they're based geographically. So, and then what that means is for those individuals, they start to realize, I, I could work anywhere. I could work for this company that I really love. And, and they're, they're hiring for remote and hybrid roles. So it's a very exciting time. Uh, speaking of which, like remote and hybrid roles and working from, I don't know, let's say somewhere sunny in Tuscany, 
near mm -hmm. vine vineyard. Um, what do you think are the key challenges that a distributed team faces when it comes to, okay, got it, language, mm -hmm. but what do you do about the time zone differences? How do you meet in the middle? Yeah. And of course, across Europe, it's kind of simple. There's a tops three hours uh, time zone difference. Mm. It's not that bad. But how do you work with someone who's on another continent? That is tricky. That is difficult. Uh, at at Spirosoft, we've got teams as far west. Uh, if you if you call, you know, if you look at this a normal map, yeah, okay. a traditional map, and 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 if you look to the west and say, okay, we're looking as far west as say Argentina, mm -hmm. and then as far east as Australia, um, there, there's a very broad range there. Now we have monthly team meetings and our office. It's a guy in Australia, a brilliant guy called Ollie. He joins our team meetings in the here in the UK. So he dials in. It's about 10 p.m. for him. So he's prepared to you know stay okay. up, and he knows that hour block is is the time when he'll join our team meetings. Mm -hmm. And he joins us on the screen, and we all wave at him, and he waves back. And um, and and that works. That's great. But it it does come with a certain. Uh, appreciation that there needs to be some concessions there's got to be some give and take and and maybe if your time zones cross a little bit mm -hmm. you know that mm -hmm. it's easy for for us and, and the polish office for example they know that for the first hour of the day mm -hmm. they probably won't be able to arrange any meetings that's that's an easy thing that that's only a small amount of overlap but where the overlap is greater it, it I think, like I said before, it just comes down to setting expectations early mm -hmm. and making sure early in a, in a project you have an agreed working pattern uh, and a timetable that works for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and the broad range of time zones works because we can hand things over mm -hmm. and we can meet with our clients in their time zone, as close to their time zones as we can. So it works to our advantage in that we can service more clients around the world but it comes with the acknowledgement that we just have to factor in, okay, this team is in this time zone, this team is there, where's the crossover? Where's the point where we can meet mm -hmm. and really get things done? And we know that where that crossover is, that's the focused time of meeting, working together, whatever it is. And what strategies uh, have you found effective in fostering collaboration and innovation besides what, uh, what you've already mentioned, which is setting expectations? Mm. Is there anything that helps? It's very similar. And the, the more we've done it, the more we've found it's very similar to, to working with a team that's in the same building. Mm -hmm. The only difference is you might be looking at them on a big screen. Okay, so we'll still have daily stand-ups for some teams. We'll still have show and tell meetings where we all get together and say, this last quarter, we worked on this project. These were the requirements. This was the problem. This is what the client wanted. This is how we delivered it. This is the software we used. So we would run through the, the same show and tell, except you know, maybe half of the team is on a screen. Mm -hmm. And they've just dialed in. It's not really that different. And, you know, with internet connections as they are and uh, screen sharing applications as they are, it's much easier now to integrate teams from around the world mm -hmm. and do the same things that we've been doing, just separate. But how do you actually substitute, you know, that thing you have colleagues and you go next to the yeah. water cooler and you have a conversation that's maybe about the latest Marvel movie. <laughs> how do you substitute that? Do you think it's yeah. something you can do online with someone on the other side of a camera? That on the is other hard. side of the world? That is hard. And that is something that at the moment you mm -hmm. can't altogether replace. Mm -hmm. You can try and have a meeting, a call where lots of people join and the agenda is not to talk about work and maybe the agenda is to talk about movies. Okay. You, can, you can create those and they do work, but there's, there is a little something missing of the human interaction that, that doesn't happen unless you're face-to-face. -face. So until maybe some VR company makes something that's as easy to wear as this and makes it look like we're face-to-face, -face, until somebody comes up with that, we're a little bit away from that. Okay, but...
but then you have people across the globe which meet in the middle, set expectations, try to create a bond as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure there will be differences. There will be cultural differences, mm -hmm. there will be creative differences mm. within the team and within the output. How do, how do those affect the entire process? How do you handle them? Do you integrate them? Do you try to, again, find a mid-ground mm -hmm. that is not culturally biased for anyone? What happens with those differences? I think they should be celebrated and highlighted and brought to the front because especially in creative teams if we all thought the same if we all just thought in one way if we all agreed on on one design that we put forward then we're not really exploring what makes a great solution because design is about solving problems so if we agree that that good design is a good solution, a fitting mm -hmm. solution, a, a frictionless, hopefully, hopefully solution to a problem, then, then that in turn is about understanding the problem in the first place. That is about understanding people. So it's about understanding users and people and hopefully a good designer can put their mind in, in you know, be in someone else's shoes, empathize and look through someone else's eyes and so, okay, what's it like for me to be either my client or mm -hmm. the users, the, my client's client, um, in this situation? And maybe that means putting yourself somewhere else in the world. Maybe that means putting yourself into a different culture. That can be difficult without any experience. So working in a diverse, multicultural team, we can, we can talk and I can say, what's it like, you know, what's the e-commerce experience mm -hmm. like? In Romania, is it any different? I don't know. Maybe in my na naive mind, I think it's the same. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's actually really different. Maybe there's things I haven't even taken into account that, that, that from your perspective, I can learn from. So a multicultural, diverse team supports and helps one another. And let's talk about those differences. Let's explore those, those cultural biases. And, and let's at least acknowledge them because if we, if we come to that, you know, hiding things or not disclosing things, then we all just end up confused. But, but I think that it should be celebrated. And um, yeah, the more we learn, the, the better we can solve those problems. Um, and how do you nurture creativity in your teams? So Andrew, the CEO here, who I think you've already spoken to, he, he said something a while ago. He believed in just finding the right people, and that's a thing in itself, but, but finding good, talented people and then giving them the space and the freedom to do their thing. To, giving them the trust and the respect and the space, the time, the tools they need to do that job and letting it happen. Now, that's... That's not a hands-off approach. There, mm -hmm. there still is mentoring and, and guidance um, needed there. But with experience, and I wouldn't say that I'm you know, at that destination yet, but slowly getting there, with experience, you can find the right people mm -hmm. and then you create, cultivate and foster an environment in which they can excel. Um, and partly that's about finding people who are passionate. Because you can teach skills. You, I can teach you how to use the tools, Figma, Photoshop, Sketch, whatever. But I can't teach you to be passionate and be teachable. To have a learning kind of spirit, if you like. So if you're, if you're hungry for knowledge and you're, you're keen to get involved and just get stuck into things the rest will come easily. It's, uh, it's the whole thing. Um, I don't remember the exact wording, but it was something similar to this. Hire passion, train skill. Okay, yeah. Because 100%. rather than hiring skill and training passion, that's never going to work. That's never going to yeah. yeah. yeah, work. That. Um, I should have just said that. That would have been... <laughs> we'll cut it. We'll cut it. We'll make it sound like it was your idea. Can you say it again? <laughs> um... If you were to pick a song, or a movie, or, I don't know, a quote, 
that mm -hmm. defines uh, your experience with working in distributed teams. Mm -hmm. Please don't say mission impossible because that will cut off everything we talked until today. Why? Why will that cut off? I mean, <laughs> if it's mission impossible. Have you seen that written on my notes? Have you written that down? Okay. No. The, the reason, the reason, it, the re <laughs> let me explain the reason why it's mission impossible. <laughs> because, I actually did not No, it is, that. it is. The reason it's mission impossible as a movie is because and I've used this on calls when I've spoken to people. The, the model, the, okay, a model that we have here at Spirosoft, the team extension, is you come to us with a specific set of requirements or a particular problem. We have a huge number of people from which we can pick and build a team to go to work with your business and solve your problems. Okay. Now, that could be everything from having a consultant, a technology consultant to work with you and consult and, and advise and guide and lead. It could be you need a team of 10 developers and a, you know, a scrum specialist and a business analyst to go to work in that part of your business. It could be that you've got your own internal development team, but you need to add a few you know, skills that maybe you, you don't have or, or, or already occupied. So... That's the Mission Impossible. They pick a team, like they get the problem, they create a team, and they work towards a solution. Now, the, the analogy falls down a little bit now, because, yeah, for obvious reasons. But, <laughs> in essence, I still use that on calls. I say it's kind of like Mission Impossible. Nobody will be harmed, but we'll put together a specialist team that will solve your problem. I mean, that, that's an absolutely fabulous answer. I was just not expecting it to okay. be Mission Impossible. Um, I'm off topic. This is a question I okay. ask everybody in my life, so I need to ask this to you. Is Mission Impossible a Christmas movie? Uh, which one? The first one? All of them. No. Die Hard is. Die Hard is. But no, 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 not Mission Impossible. No. No, yeah, I'm trying to think right. all of them. No, none of you're them really. You're actually right. Yeah. It's Die Hard. Die Hard. But Die Hard is a Christmas movie. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in the end, everybody gets what they want. And that's yeah. that's the purpose mm. of of the exercise you're doing on a daily basis here. Mm -hmm. And everybody's happy. Do you have any other thoughts you'd like to share with us? I don't think so. No, those were those were very good questions. I think we've pretty much covered everything. Um, it's a great place to work. It's diverse. It's uh, it's growing. Already grown hugely from from where we were. I think I was employee number five Ooh. here in the UK. Nice number. Uh, but yeah, onwards and upwards. More to come. And tomorrow again, uh, had the same conversation with Andrew. By the time we'll be posting this, it will be a back to the future moment. Oh, okay. Uh, because tomorrow. We're doing a webinar. And tomorrow, will this be yesterday tomorrow? Or will this be No, in I the think it's going to be a couple of weeks back okay. tomorrow. But how do you feel about that? Excited. Mm -hmm. My first live webinar. Oh, really? Hopefully there'll be lots of people there. But ultimately, it's just you talking to a screen. So it'll be like any other day, really. <laughs> <laughs> you just said about, you know, connecting with people through screens and Yeah, like... <laughs> I know. But when you can't see a lot of yeah. people, when you can't see a lot of faces, it's just you looking into the camera, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's yeah, you with yourself. Strange. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Thank you. For joining us today, for talking about Mission Impossible, and most importantly... <laughs> how distributed teams work yeah and thank you to everybody listening i think we're done for today and we'll see you tomorrow aka a couple of weeks back <laughs> with our webinar yeah thank you toby and thank, thank you, you everybody for tuning in see you next time <laughs>